Maritime Security Wildlife on board with the Miami Water Cops. Today, drugs bust. The Water Cops are on the front line. We stayed close to the area where the tip was saying that this truck was going to come out of. We responded and uh, secured the area. Grand theft felony. The sheriff takes a jet skier in for questioning. That's stolen, you're going to jail. And final briefing. The end is in sight for the special ops trainees. Security guys, we have that wolf mindset, but there's sometimes when you have to back off and wait for help. Miami. A bustling beachfront of holidaymakers. But it's not just pleasure seekers who flock here. It's also a major smuggling entry point into the USA for both drugs and illegal immigrants. It's down to US Customs to catch the smugglers. And just minutes ago at this garage in downtown Miami, they did just that, conducting a massive drugs bust on a truck packed with cocaine. The drugs are smuggled in via the Miami River, part of the jurisdiction of the Miami Boat Cops. Head of their unit, Sergeant Art Serig, is at the scene. Oh, we work hand in hand with the U.S. Customs on the on the river since we're on the river all the time, and uh, my guys are like um, the uh, uh, extra bodies for U.S. Customs. Basically, I had my unit standing by to do a, the traffic stop when the vehicles uh, left. We have the marked units uh, so that the uh, individuals we're stopping believe that we're the police, so that they don't think it's a ripoff. Our Marine Patrol, myself and Officer Gonzalez, were notified first this morning. Uh, we were in an undercover car. We stayed close to the area where the tip was saying that this truck was going to come out of. And immediately, when we had information that the people were coming out of uh, this area, we responded and uh, secured the area. And uh, other unmarked units came and took down the truck. The driver of uh, this rented uh, rental vehicle, uh, he was taken into custody, and he's been taken over to uh, U.S. Customs, uh, where the investigators are talking to him now. Leading the operation here is U.S. Customs Special Agent John Clark. U.S. Customs and a task force on the river have been keeping a Haitian freighter under surveillance for the last week. This morning, we noticed this rider truck leaving a warehouse adjacent to the freighter. We followed it and conducted the stop here in downtown Miami and found 20 boxes, each with an estimated 18 to 20 kilos of cocaine apiece inside of them. So we're talking roughly about 400 kilos of cocaine. Um, we estimate uh, upwards of $5 million street value, and that's probably on the low side for 400 kilos of cocaine. The local forensics people will be doing an examination of the boxes, getting prints. We're going back and we'll be printing all the uh, people that were at the uh, dock side and on the, the crew as well, see if there's any complicity in this smuggling attempt. Here at the dockside, Marine Patrol officers Lily Bethencourt and Julius Wiggins are collecting information from the freighter crew. Mario. Overseeing this operation, U.S. Customs Chief Inspector Mike Sinclair. While these vessels are in port, immigration requires the crew members that don't have the proper visas to live on the vessel. And usually at the, in a yard of this nature on the Miami River, there's usually 10 or 15, 100 people just hanging around. It seems to be the gathering spot just to chat and whatnot. Uh, it would be hard to believe that a fair portion of them didn't know what was going on when all this activity is happening around them, all this dope coming off these freighters. So they interview them all. They try to get information from them. This is all you have. You got a picture ID? Can you put your photograph on it? This is our fourth seizure in 12 days of this nature. Uh, it comes in spurts. Uh, last year, we found 7,300 pounds of cocaine on the Miami River. It is the number one source of cocaine seizures in the country right now. Uh, we're taking their information down, their names, their date of births, where they're born, a, descri a general description of them, and we're also running checks on them to see if they're wanted. What they basically do now is we, we'll, we'll go through the whole inside of the boat and, and warehouse and everything, double check to make sure if there's any more dope left around. Uh, they've got a dope dog inside there right now, sniffing the area out. And just 30 minutes after the bust, the news crews are arriving. The Special Ops Training Course. 
four guys have spent the last week on this boat training to become elite security personnel on the water. Luso Filo started the course a complete novice, preparing for his round-the-world boat trip. He's had to face life-threatening challenges. Trenton Mello had to confront his inner demons when diving for a decoy bomb. He's hoping this course will catapult him into the world of maritime security. Casey Morgan, a US Special Forces soldier, trained in unconventional warfare. The hardest thing for him has been adjusting to the narrow confines of a boat. And Don Edwards. He's a major in the US Special Forces, and this is the kind of specialist situation he's best at. And walk towards me. I got a gun in your back. Don't do anything stupid. Don't make me do something to you. It's the final day of the course, and there's just one more exercise to get through. Hidden cameras. Instructor Dave Kellerman briefs the trainees. Video cameras are an extra set of eyes for you. They can sometimes be third, fourth, and fifth pair of eyes, depending on how many cameras you have. Now, what I've done is I've taken a regular video camera. These are things that are really inexpensive. They're black and white, but the black and white version works better in low light conditions than the color version. They come in pre-made waterproof housings, which are very, very expensive. For four bucks, I've made my own waterproof or water resistant housing for this particular camera. All right, um, now I've got a little bit different version here. This is a different kind of camera. What I did is I took this camera, mounted in this waterproof housing, and it's got a 60 foot cable. Um, and I take it and I attach it to a boat hook with some black tape. I'm gonna let one of you guys do this for me in a second after I pass the camera around. Then this is an ex ex telescoping boat hook. I can put this in the water and direct it under the boat and, and depending on the visibility of the water, see quite a bit. If it's water like we have here, the visibility is only a couple feet. But if the sun's out, you can, you can get it under the boat and you can look at something. And it keeps you from getting wet because if you're the only security guy on a boat, you go in the water to check something for the boat owner. What's that gonna happen? What's gonna happen while you're in the water? Don? Boat's vulnerable. Right. You, you are vulnerable. There's a there's a window of opportunity there. And maybe someone was trying to do that to you. Maybe someone was trying to get you nervous so you'd have to get in the water to get you off the deck of the boat. And if experts or professional uh, criminal are surveilling a boat and they're looking for a vulnerable time to take you down, the most vulnerable time is either when the security's sleeping away from the boat or involved in a task that they can't immediately provide security. Swimming, swimming or diving would be one of them. All right, guys, five minute break. Fort Lauderdale, 22 miles north of Miami. More yachts pass through here than anywhere else in the world. But more boats means more boat crime. A growing concern is boat theft. Over 5,000 were stolen in Florida in the year 2000 alone. Boats may cost at least five times the amount of a car, but they're a lot easier to steal. Deputy Larry Whitney of the Broward Sheriff's Office polices these busy waters. He keeps an eye out for possible stolen vessels, and this jet skier's wave runner is a prime candidate. He has no paperwork on him, not even his ID, and the craft is registered in another state. Deputy Larry's radioed in the details and waits for the report back. Have you ever been arrested before, sir? No. No? Yeah. Eleven Oscar 3. Yeah. Eleven Oscar 3. 5429, coming back to a 94 Yamaha Wave Runner jet ski. The registration is good until 2003, and it's registered to a David Patterson in Atlanta, Georgia. 5429 on him also. Okay. Who owns that way, brother? I got the registration. Well, the registration's come back and registered to somebody else in Atlanta until 2003. You've got no I got the paper, I yet. got the contract. Where is it? In the car. It's in the car. Where's your car at? In Boca Raton. In Boca Raton. Okay, you're coming back to the boat ramp with me. Can you call somebody to have them bring me the paperwork that says you own that? I can you know, can go. No, you're not, I go, I, I, you're not going anywhere because I don't know if that's yours or not. Okay. And if that's stolen, you're going to jail. 
Yeah, of course. Is there anybody I... that has an extra set of keys to your car? No, nobody's in my house, sir. Who'd you buy this from? Huh? Who did you buy this from? I don't remember the name. Huh? I don't remember the name. You don't remember the name? Yes. Okay, you've never registered this in your name, is what it's telling me. What is the... I got the papers, I buy the White Runner. Uh... You hop on my boat. You don't mind. checking on this to see what the ownership is. No, but uh, you're not going to check my papers on the car? No, I'm not going to check your papers. You're supposed to have them on the Wave Runner. Uh, okay, it's just like owning a car. Can I use your phone? Yeah, you can use the phone when we get back to the office. In the meantime, go sit up here in the bow of my boat. <laughs> uh, he's got no identification on him, which is not an uncommon thing. But uh, being as the amount of wave runners that we have stolen in the area, we're going to have to go back to our office and uh, do a little further investigation and make sure everything's legit with it. If it comes back that it is stolen and I can prove it, uh, it's possession of stolen property, uh, it's a grand theft charge, and it's a felony, and he's going to jail. After the break, the sheriff's in pursuit of the truth. And customs reveal how the drugs were smuggled. Uh, the obvious reason for these vessels to be on the Miami River it's pretty plain. It's to smuggle dope and smuggle currency out of the country. The Miami drugs bust. TV crews are now flocking to the scene of the arrest. It was here that US Customs apprehended a van stuffed with 400 kilos of cocaine, a street value of more than $5 million. The drugs were unloaded this morning from a Haitian freighter docked on the Miami River. The boat cops worked hand in hand with customs on this one. A bust like this is a big news story in Miami. Eight million bucks, that story coming up on 7 News. And right now we're in the process of uh, uh, letting the media, um, you know, get their shot at it so they can see it. And then uh, we're going to take the uh, the vehicle over and process all the, the packages and the cocaine, uh, the, the kilos, and try to identify who the owners of this are. John Clark, U.S. Customs Special Agent. Basic modus operandi is to put the uh, smuggled or the, the contraband in the back of a container or the truck like this and try and cover the front of it with legitimate uh, cargo so that at least an incidental look won't reveal the fact that there's cocaine in there. Uh, fortunately, we had canine dogs working with us on this. We were able to find the cocaine very quickly. We've arrested the driver of this truck. We're following leads now relative to other people who might be involved. At the dockside, they've discovered where the drugs were hidden. Customs Chief Inspector Mike Sinclair is running the investigation here. This Haitian freighter came into the Miami River about one week ago. And due to its past history and some investigative tips, we've had it under a quasi-surveillance. We've been watching it for uh, several days. These freighters are the latest tool in the drug smuggling trade. Their ancient metal bodywork, a perfect cover for secret compartments. Our inspectors responded to this vessel and found the false compartment in the floor where they had tried to patch it back up. This is the cargo hold of the vessel. If you look right to your right, you'll see down there the three holes that they took the dope out of the floor of the vessel from. We found some export cargo of oil without its boxes. It had been loaded on with boxes, but now the oil was just in jugs on the floor. Uh, this is the same boxes that were found in the U-Haul truck four miles from here with all the cocaine. Special Ops. It's the final exercise. When the guys complete this one, they'll be ready to graduate. Their task is to rig a hidden CCTV camera to monitor the dock for suspicious activity. They've decided to hide the camera amongst the electrical cables on the dock side. It makes for a pretty good disguise. How's the pitch? Sideways. Go ahead and rotate the camera. Turn so it to where the. Uh, oh, there, there you go. go. There you go. Yeah. Do, would, would you want it up higher so we can maybe not have it? Yeah, maybe put a side view. Maybe put a couple pieces of hoses underneath it. 
An experienced criminal would be able to dodge this angle. They need to position it higher up and decide to use the dockside power supply pole. Better. It's a little crooked, but sorry. Right. You have to turn a little bit. We're placing a camera outside so it's looking down the dock and uh, that will give uh, somebody inside that's working or working alone a little early warning. You can uh, place a TV center up in the br uh, TV up in the bridge. Oh, so see. whoever's on duty up in the bridge can be doing their normal duties, just be able to glance over and uh, keep an eye out for somebody coming down the dock. Same way, a little more. There you got it. The guy there has seen his photo in the post office. <laughs> That's a good view of the dock. Okay. Let's see how well you've disguised it. Well, Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk down the dock, and I'm going to come up to this thing and just see if it jumps out at me. I know it's there, but I just, what I'm looking for is something that jumps out at me. fixated on the power pole. I'm more worried about the boat than the power pole, so if I was a bad guy, I might be looking for cameras in the boat, not necessarily on the power pole. I did notice that I was coming down the dock. It didn't jump out to me. Had I not known it was there, I probably would not have noticed it. Had it been me, I would have placed the camera somewhere on the boat, and I would have been in control of the camera more so than it is here, because it would have been self-contained aboard the boat and not coming down onto the dock. All in all, I think you did a good job given the amount of time. the sheriff's office. After further intensive questioning, the jet okay. skier is still under suspicion. It must be registered. It's the exact same thing as a car, period. You don't go driving a car down the road with no tag on it. You don't go driving a car that's not registered to you. It brings up little things in the back of our heads that maybe it's stolen, right? I guess so. I understand. Okay. That. All right. At the 11th hour, just as Deputy Larry attempts to contact the registered owner, Hi, this is Deputy the jet skier's sister arrives with proof of ownership. With Mr. Patterson in reference to a wave runner that he used to own. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Today's your lucky day. What I'm going to do is I issued you a citation for failure to transfer the title and registration. However, I will see you again out here on this thing. And it better be registered and better have the right numbers on it because next time I'm not going to be so nice. Thank you very much, Okay, go ahead and sign that. Okay. Thank all you. right, you're Thank all set. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, ma'am. Take care. Bye. Thank you. If it does come back that it was an unreported stolen wave runner or something. I have all the information. I know where the guy is. I know where he lives. I know where he works. I'll pay him a visit a little later on and go go that route. But as it is right now, based on the information that I had, I, I wrote him a citation for failure to transfer the title and registration on his wave runner. The special ops trainees have completed the course and discuss how it went. Trent, what's the biggest difficulty in dealing with an intruder aboard a boat? The mobility was very limited, for one thing. What are you doing in my house, man? Move very safe. Yeah, it's hard to control someone. The old rule of distance is the safety. You know, you're protecting yourself by maintaining a safe distance so someone can't rush you, even though you have a gun out, right? Someone can get the drop on you. But yeah, you know, inside of the boat, it's a close quarters environment. It's kind of what Don mentioned in the after action, right after we did an exercise, was that he had a hard time controlling someone in close quarters environment. It is real difficult because uh, even if you train a lot in a, in a house or a building, room, normal rooms are a lot bigger than, than uh, what you have here. You try to turn, turn somebody around or you know, keep a hold of them and also keep a safe distance to where you're you know, still safe yourself. It's a lot difficult, a lot of things to think about. You know, we hate to admit it as security guys because we have that wolf mindset but there's some times when you have to back off and wait for help one guy alone on a boat like this it's pretty hard to safely 
disarm or uh, disarm a potentially armed individual. So I, my overall comment on you guys individually is you work excellent as individuals and then you had to work collectively and from a teamwork standpoint, Trenton was given the uh, task of organizing a schedule and working with you guys. It was great. You guys work good as a team. You conveyed information to each other. And uh, I think you guys could go out now and get yourself a little contract and uh, go out and protect something off for some guy and they uh, wouldn't have any problem at all. I'm doing it. Yeah. So that's it, guys. That's the end of the course. And the last thing that I have to do is to give you your certificates. And uh, I've got them right here. And this is uh, a certificate of graduation in the Maritime Security Operation course for Don Edwards. Thanks, sir. I have a court, uh, certificate of graduation for Luso Filho. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Certificate of graduation for Trenton Mello. Thank you very much. And for Casey, you guys are hereby declared proficient in providing security in a maritime environment. Hoorah. Hoorah. That's it, boys. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it, guys. Good job. Good working with you guys. Yeah, right. Thanks, man. All right. So all you got to do now is just uh, get up your personal gear. And, uh, I feel like I got a lot of valuable uh, things from it that I'll be able to use to better provide services to people in the future. This was my vacation. <laughs> I gotta go back to work. Yeah, the, the overnight exercise was uh, the high point because uh, we got to take the things that we'd been learning the past few days prior to that and uh, put them into action. And that's always good. Normally when I sign up for a course, I sign up for a course in, a, in an area of interest or in an area that, that we have experience in or that we, we're responsible for training people and to get a new perspective and to get a new feeling and to see how other people are training. And, uh, you know, we, like any course, we pick up some things, other things we, we, we see, we try. If we don't like it, we don't use it. I feel more aware, no more prepared, you know? There are a few things that was open up that I have to uh, do a little bit more advanced, you know, some more thinking a little bit more about it. But it was great. It was good. It was fun. You know, I was excited yesterday. It was an exciting thing. You know, going in and all that, seeing these guys in action. My world trip, looking forward to. Especially when the wind blows like that and the sun shines. It makes me want to go. <laughs> Another group of guys coming in tomorrow for a uh, law enforcement course, and they're going to be doing uh, some scout swimming and some tactical operations.